This week, we are talking about Revan, Mandalorians, and Porks. It's like a Star Wars club sandwich. And then we're the bread, dry yet lightly toasted. This is the Star Wars Show. From the Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco, here's your hosts, Andy and Anthony. Hello and welcome to the Star Wars Show, the only Star Wars show on the internet brave enough to ask the tough Star Wars questions. Right, like, okay, so in the premiere episode of Resistance, Kaz is playing a game of space darts. Super but cool. clearly to the left of him, space arcade cabinets. To the right, space jukebox. Yeah. Are there bowling alleys in space? Ski ball? What's on the jukebox? Those are your hard hitting questions. I need to know these details. Let's go to the news. We're the only people that can give you these details. I just need to know that if Flix and Orca are like celebrating their birthday, do they get a bounce castle? Maybe you can ask Pablo. I will. And I'm just gonna start. Last week, we finally got to see a little bit of The Mandalorian, the new Star Wars series coming to Disney's streaming service. The first image, revealed exclusively on StarWars.com, shows off the Mandalorian armor complete with what looks like a weapon strapped to their back, walking through a very Star Warsy looking village. Also revealed were the list of episodic directors joining the show, including Thor Ragnarok's Taika Waititi, Soulmates Bryce Dallas Howard, Dope's Rick Famuyiwa, and Jessica Jones' Deborah Chow, with our very own Dave Filoni directing the first episode. The series is written and executive produced by John Favreau, with Kathleen Kennedy, Dave Dave Filoni and Colin Wilson also executive producing, and Karen Gilchrist co-executive producing. Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes is continuing the celebration for the 15th anniversary of Knights of the Old Republic with a new kind of event entitled Ancient Journey, Legend of the Old Republic, where you can use the characters previously released in July to help you unlock Jedi Knight Revan. The six events are all loosely based on the Knights of the Old Republic storyline, as well as containing some environments from the original game, like the sewers of Taurus and the ancient Sith tomb on Korriban. The Legend of the Old Republic event goes live on October 18th. For more information, check out this link. ILMX Lab revealed a new mixed reality experiment today during the Magic Leap Leap Conference entitled Star Wars Project Porg. The experiment tasks you with gaining the trust and affection of your porgs by playing with them and offering them treats. You can also teach them how to maneuver around real world environments with the help of C-3PO. I'm reading off the screen and getting more excited as I do so. For more on Project Porg, check out ILMXLab.com. And for more breaking news from around the Star Wars galaxy, check out StarWars.com slash SWS. I'm so glad you made it through that Project Porg thing. Good morning. I am here with my hot cup of coffee, trying to wake up this morning, getting ready to go to near Comic-Con. Salvin Johnson, TK210, 501st Legion and I'm here at New York Comic Con! Woo! We're getting ready for the Our Star Wars Stories panel. Everyone has been shooting video with their cameras behind the scenes. It's just crazy amounts of people here. And we're so happy and excited to be here for Our Star Wars Stories. Lucasfilm presents Our Star Wars Stories. That's us! That's us! Whee! Here's the people starting. We're starting in the queue. I'm ready, man. I think Yikes. we have a lot of people showing up. All right, everybody, smile! Yeah. Yeah. show that Star Wars. It's a show about people. It's a show about people coming together. Star Wars is our human bond. We're all, we're all here to I realized I actually am the entire people. Just me more. I went shopping and I found some really cool stuff. This TIE fighter, another Luke farm boy, R2-D2. I finally got a burrata. This now completes my tri logo collection of all the Princess Leia's. I'm only browsing. I'm only browsing. Just honored to be on this panel with all of these incredible people, sharing my story with all theirs. Had a great time, got some cool stuff, had some fun people, and just had a really wonderful time. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Today we're joined by Star Wars author Kevin Shinnick, who's actually been really involved with a lot of Star Wars content over the past couple of years. And now, what's it like coming from the sort of pop culture behemoth that is Star Wars, working with the robot chicken right. and stuff like that, and then coming in and being part of the family now? I would jump at a chance to do anything Star Wars. I grew up with the originals. To think that I'm able to do that now, I mean, it's a cliche. Everybody who does work but says, boy, if I could talk to the eight-year-old Kevin Shinnick and tell... <laughs> Well, I think my career has the focus of an eight-year-old because I'm hitting all the things that I liked when I was that age. Mm -hmm. I'm in a fortunate position where I get to choose some of the projects I get to do. And whenever Star Wars comes, I'm like, count me in because I'm such a fan. I'm a fan, but now I'm also a parent. My daughter's into it, so I want to be able to extend that world so that she's able to enjoy it as much as I have. Yes, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about Chewie and the Porgs because that's such a perfect example of fans that are now growing up and wanting to bring right. their kids right. in and sharing those stories together. How do you get into that mindset? 
mind space of like separating yourself as a fan and thinking about how younger fans need to interact with right. the story. Well, it's funny because as you said, I come from Robot Chicken where we did three Star Wars specials and... Definitely not for kids. Definitely not for kids, <laughs> exactly. But when they came to me and said, would you be interested in doing this? I said, yes. For that same reason I said with my daughter, you know, she's primed to like Star Wars because daddy likes Star Wars. Everything around him is Star Wars. But she's also seven. So she's a little frightened by Darth Vader or Kylo Ren. So I thought if this was an opportunity to kind of launch into an introduction to Star Wars through something that was safe and fun and cute and trying to make it happy for everybody. Everybody. And maybe dancing around the fact that Chewie may or may not have eaten a pork. Maybe! He definitely maybe. cooked one. There's a shot of Chewie in front of a campfire with his back to us. And to me, that's there for a reason, because certain things did happen. We can't undo what happened. Oh, so you're in the camp saying that he did. I, yeah. I've debated this with a lot of fans. They're like, did he eat it? Did he put it aside? Oh, oh, I oh. think he ate it. Well, I think the damage was done. <laughs> Don't <laughs> waste guys, it, you know? guys on a spit, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, well, whether he ate it or not is kind of Kind of up for interpretation. And it doesn't have to be serious, which is no. something that your career has definitely exemplified. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about working on Robot Chicken. I want to know about how the collaboration process goes when you're writing something like that and you're working with the props and the animators right. and stuff. It's got to be a beast. For the longest time, there are six or more guys or women in a room quietly sitting at their desk writing up sketches because we have a certain quota to hit at the end of the day, which is a high quota of sketches that we need to get in. Say if we're working on it for five weeks, for three weeks we are sitting there. And I always joke that if someone comes in and puts Girl Scout cookies on the desk, there'll be eight sketches about Girl Scout cookies. Because everybody's <laughs> just kind of like, where am I going to get my next idea from? And then once we choose the sketches, then we all script our own sketches. We put it into a big document and then it becomes what everybody imagines the room to be, which is we're all punching up the script and we're finding better jokes. And it's yeah. like working in here, you know, you find different things. You're like, oh, what about that? Just trying to find the slightest nook and cranny that hasn't been exploited for comedy. And then I have to say, when you write a sketch and you're showing it back and then George laughs, you're like, I made George laugh. Like, you know, I like, oh my get God. That? It's remarkable. It really is remarkable. That's cool. So, I mean, obviously you're here for a reason. You're hanging out in the <laughs> yeah. office. I just come by, Just walk come by around. to say hi. What's on the of future course, for you? Of course, I'm sure you've never heard this before, but I can't really talk about it. But let's just say I had such a good time with chewing the porgs that I want to kind of age it up a little bit and maybe do a larger young adult something or other. So Very cool. Yeah, so if you never see me again, it means I spoke too much about it here. <laughs> and they're just like, <laughs> they're like this was a done. test and you failed. Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm out. But, uh, but yeah, I'm super excited by it. So hopefully next year we can all talk about it. That's awesome. We'll have to have you back. Well, thanks answering. very much. Thank you so much for coming of by. Of course, anytime. That was great. I always like learning about comedy in the Star Wars galaxy. And there's so much of it, but it also gets you thinking about the multitude of parodies of Star Wars that have been done throughout the years. Yes, which is why we want to know what your favorite Star Wars parody is and why. Send it to us using the hashtag fake Star Wars and we'll feature our favorites here next week. And as always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and remember to be kind and rewind. That's good advice. It was good advice in 1986. It's good advice now. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you. Wisdom doesn't have a shelf life. No. You know, it's, it's good forever. Rewind what? VHSs are making a comeback, baby. Yeah. I like that warble, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. That's good. And the graininess. Mm -hmm. <sighs> be kind, rewind was my favorite quote in the beginning of a Clone Wars episode. <laughs>